How will the environment for the global mining and metal sector look in 2030? The scenarios you're about to see emerge from a year of workshops and interviews with over 200 leaders from the private sector, government, academia and international and non-governmental organizations. Participants began by identifying the key drivers that would shape the sector's operating environment by 2030. Some drivers are relatively predictable. Population growth, industrialization, urbanization and the challenge of meeting demand for some commodities. Others are highly uncertain. These were prioritized and categorized under four headings. The geo-economic landscape, the geopolitical landscape, the economic outlook and the environmental outlook. The geo-economic landscape. Will Asia dominate? Or will power be spread across regions? Will cross-border flows be more open or closed? Will markets be free or controlled? The geopolitical landscape. Will it be stable or unstable? Will there be ideological convergence or divergence between regions? The economic outlook. Will volatility be of the more predictably cyclical kind or more extreme and unpredictable? Will average global GDP grow rapidly or stagnate? The environmental outlook. Will the response to climate change be decisive and ambitious or reactive and incremental? Many combinations of answers are possible. Three were prioritized by participants to form scenario stories based on their relevance, their divergence and their capacity to challenge thinking. In Green Trade Alliance, slow economic recovery and persistent unemployment prompts EU leaders to adopt a new green growth strategy and a GDP plus metric incorporating social and environmental measures. In 2016, the European Union reaches out to the United States of America to create the Green Trade Alliance. Its motto, environmental sustainability without compromising competitiveness. The Green Trade Alliance, including some industrialized, resource-rich and developing countries, uses environmental standards to justify imposing protectionist measures which shifts trade patterns and reverses globalization. As the World Trade Organization falls into disuse, a new, sustainable trade organization facilitates and enforces Green Trade Alliance agreements. Countries outside the alliance operate independently according to their own standards. As the Green Trade Alliance rules stimulate radical change in consumer behaviors, resource use patterns and technological innovations, countries are increasingly defined by whether or not they belong to the GTA. By 2030, non-GTA countries' initial stronger growth is challenged by water and energy constraints, while the growth of green states is steady and sustainably based. In rebased globalism, the world is committed to realizing the benefits of interconnectedness, but globalism becomes far more complex and multipolar. The liberalized economies of China, India, Russia and Brazil forge ahead. They account for the majority of the top 10 global mining companies. But 2030's rebased globalism also reflects two other major power shifts. First, economic power is no longer held only by strong demand markets, but also by countries with control over strategically important resources. They emerge from spheres of influence and play by their own rules. With more voices at the table, global collaboration becomes cumbersome and agreements are often possible only amongst smaller groups. Second, local communities become more agile and sophisticated in harnessing technology to communicate and mobilize both locally and globally. Public pressure leads some resource-rich countries to capture more social value through processing and manufacturing or introducing national development taxes. Global investors and companies are held accountable for the local impact of operations, both morally 
and through tough local laws. In resource security, a growing sense emerges that future economic growth will depend on securing access to resources. Globalization breaks down amid a resurgence of nationalism, state intervention in markets and protectionist barriers. In the quest for resource security, countries prioritize domestic use of resources. Cartels emerge around strategically important resources. Neo-colonialism sees economic, political or military power used to secure resources. And import substitution strategies make use of whatever resources are most readily available, regardless of their environmental impacts. As global growth slows, instability grows. The threat of coups, sovereign defaults and nationalizations mean prices remain volatile and little capital is available for international investment. By 2030, the era of globalization is a distant memory. These scenarios exist to spur scenario thinking, which can be a powerful tool to stretch the imagination, facilitate debate, generate new strategies and test existing ones. By discussing implications in terms of opportunities and challenges, stakeholders can together create robust strategic options to promote the sustainability of the sector.